Hi everybody, this is Mika Vandu and in this video I'm going to show you how you can install an Anycubic Ultrabase on my init A8 3D printer or basically every other machine. So first off, what is an Anycubic Ultrabase? It's a special build platform coding developed by Anycubic and first shown on their Anycubic i3 Mega Machine, which is a very good 3D printer. I have already recorded a review of my friend's i3 Mega, which I just need to edit, so stay tuned for that as well. And basically what it does is prints stick to it very good while printing and once the build platform cools down, so like under 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the builds remove very easy. Or at least that's the temperatures of my JG Aurora A5. My JG Aurora A5 back there has a similar coating and it works very good on it, so I just wanted to have it on my init 8 as well. You don't need any tools to remove the finished prints then, because they are very very easy to remove as you will see later. Also you can clean this build platform very easily using just some alcohol and a, and a paper towel. So let's open the box. Alright, so what's in the box? So I have ordered this on their AliExpress store and this one comes with the heated bed and the only reason why I chose the one with the heated bed for a few extra bucks is because it was shipped from Germany. So it just took three days to arrive here, which is very awesome. So let's open it up. And here it is. There's also a bag of screws with proper nuts. We have the ultra base wrapped in plastic. On the back it's just some adhesive sticker. Remove the model till the ultra base cools down. Um, well, I think that's not how it works. You can remove the model very easily once it cools down. Here the bed is 220 by 220. So taking into account that the ultra base is just sticked on top of the heated bed here, I could actually just leave, it, leave the current heated bed on and clean it and install the ultra base on top of that. All right, my current plan is to keep the original heated bed on the Enid A8, not only because it's already wired, but also because it has already some sheet of insulation on the other side. So the thing that we need to do now is to remove the old masking tape and I'm pretty sure that this won't fully remove. As you can see that's not, that's not funny. I need to get this cleaned. Furthermore, as you probably know or maybe not, there is an engineering error on the a 8 because normally you can level the printer with these wing nuts but the problem on the a 8 is that the hole here has a thread inside so basically for leveling you need to use the screwdriver. But after the Anycubic Ultra Basin is installed you have no longer access to these screws so I will probably just drill this hole a little bit larger so that we can actually just use it with the wing nuts how it's supposed to be. That's the residue I was talking about earlier. Alright, I found a way to remove all of the residue and this includes a little bit of alcohol and a scraper. So a little bit is left so I'll show you how to remove it namely in the corner back here so we'll just put up a little bit of alcohol like that it should be sufficient. And then just take the scraper and try to get the alcohol over the areas where the residue is to the left. And now let's tr just scrape it off like this. It doesn't matter whether you hit a little bit of the aluminum corners here. Alright, this should be it. So let's take a paper towel and wipe down the build plate with it. If you find some residue, just repeat the steps. Before we can stick our new ultra base on here, we need to remove the bed and drill the holes on the holder down here. Now it's time to unscrew the bed. For this, I'm using a Philips 2 screwdriver. Right one, two. should be it. One, two, and the last one. That's number four. Alright, the bed is now removed. What I'm going to do now is to enlarge these holes, all four of them. And using my 3.2mm drill first, 
we are going to enlarge the hole. So slowly, slowly start with low pressure. That's one. That's two. A 3.2 mm drill did the job for me, but if you don't have one, you can actually use a 3.5 mm or even a 4 mm one, or the American equivalents, obviously. At this point, I was getting myself into some trouble because I was installing the screws the same way as they came out, not thinking about what consequences vibrations can bring, possibly destroying the print because of screwing around with the levelness. Guess what? Anycubic has included some white, probably Deflon washers, to avoid this issue. They should be added right on top of the wing nuts. The only way I found this out is by reading the instructions, after having installed the bed again. So the next step is to get it halfway leveled. And I don't mean leveling in the terms of the correct offset from the nozzle. I mean leveling that it's straight in all axes. The next thing is to wipe it down with alcohol again and then we can stick the build plate on. Now we're going to put this on top of this. I didn't touch it, or at least I thought that I didn't touch it. Let's try to get the cover off. And now it's all about getting it as good as possible. Now everything is done except the leveling, which is what we are going to do before we are going to remove the protective cover. The way I decided to do it is what I refer to as a safe level approach. The way this works is that you are going to screw in all the screws before, so that the build blade is as low as possible, and then when we know the final nozzle position, we can start releasing the screws again. Alright, now let's switch on the printer and hit home all. Now we are going to hit the auto home button, auto home again. While this is in progress, I have the, my finger on the emergency shutdown. So, it's now approaching the home limit. Oh, we still need to get lower. That's not good. To cope with the leveling disaster, I quickly installed a screw and two nuts from the included hardware onto the leveling adapter. I installed this leveling adapter on my 888 in my like third or fourth video on this channel, and those time it was to avoid that the C leveling switch was moving all the time when being actuated. I will leave a link to the model down in the video description. And as you can see, it's working as expected. Good enough. Alright, and now probably the most satisfying thing of the whole work. I have leveled the whole system and it should be fine. Let's pull the protection. This looks amazing. I'm just getting a print on the SD card and then let's print. Alright, after successful re-leveling and cleaning of the build plate, priming of the extruders, it's time to start the first print. Although the print started out nicely, the blue extruder was definitely too low. With a build platform like this, you need to have a higher first layer, otherwise it's nearly impossible to get off. But I'm learning, and only mistakes are your best teacher. Although the main part was very easy to remove, the prime tower and the skirt were really hard to get off. It seems like the black extruder was also a little bit too low, at least in the first few parameters, because for some reason, at the infill, it's higher than the outer parameters. Although I don't really know the source of this issue, I suspect it being my dual extrusion setup. Because, as you know, I have two different E3D V6 clones installed, and they are not clamped down as tightly as they should be. Right after I finally managed to remove the part, I reprinted it with a higher first layer. This time, the first layer was alright, and the black one was also alright and consistent throughout the first layer. And it came off far easier. Alright, don't forget to regularly clean the surface. Using a little bit of alcohol, just like, oh that's already too much probably, like that, make sure that the bed is cold, 
then just use some paper towel if you have. I don't have one, so I just have sort of handkerchiefs here. Just to show you how easy or how hard it is to remove a model again, I've printed this dual colored tree frog and now it's time to remove it. But I will switch it off first. So let's start off with the tower. It should be Yeah, there we go. You see how easy that was? Pretty easy. Let's try this one. Just go a little bit, little bit here. It's the nail. And there you go. It's not that hard. Now the frog itself. Removing the frog is actually a little bit more difficult because of the ooze shield. And if you try to remove it, you just remove the ooze shield. The best and easiest thing to do is to take a cutter and cut the ooze shield away before trying to remove the model. There we go. But it really looks like the blue one was a little bit too close, but the black one was alright. Alright, this is what the model looks like after the ooze shield has been removed and the support. And as you can see there's a little bit of stringing. Other than that it came out pretty nicely. But it didn't remove as easy as the other one. Alright, that's how you install an Anycubic Ultra Base on the Enid A8 3D printer. It wasn't really that hard. And the healer bed is still here in the back waiting for other projects. But the question is, how well does it really work and is it worth it? Um, it's actually difficult to say. I expected the Ultra Base to be very similar to the clone of the Ultra Base here that's on the JG Aurora A5. But actually this isn't the case. The prints don't really remove that well as on the clone, so I actually would look out for one like that here. Alright, is it worth it? Before I finish off this video here saying that the Ultra Base is not that good as I thought it is, or others say it is, I have to correct myself here. It's been like two weeks since I recorded the video and the original part was even before I printed the frog. I have been printing a few more prints. I managed to get the first layer just right so that the print stays strong while printing and is still easy to remove or at least easier than the example shown. But as you know from my videos, I'm not the guy saying go out and buy it, it's the only thing that works. We know that this isn't true. Let's consider the Ultra Base an option. An option that works if the settings are alright. The only thing that I don't know so far is how long will it last. Somebody on Twitter replied to my tweet where I showed it off that it only lasts for 30 to 40 prints. Maybe there's also some truth behind it. I hope not. But only time will tell and now let's finish this video off properly. That's all I have here. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope that you liked this video. And if you have any questions or want to share your own experiences with the Anycubic Ultra Base, make sure to leave it down below. I would love to hear them. And now that's it for this video. It's really cold because I left the window open and now it's like 30 degrees Celsius here. Alright, have a nice day. See ya.